terbutylene and ritodrin. So uh, terbutylene, okay, this has beta-1 and beta-2 uh, agonistic effects, okay. Uh, ritodrin will be beta-2 agonistic effects, okay. Uh, Believe it or not, these aren't used for asthma, even though uh, beta-2 agonism is what we use, such as salbutamol for asthma. Um, but um, beta-2 agonism is uh, a, a tocolytic process, okay? So uh, uh, tocolysis, or uh, a tocolytic process, is one that uh, delays labor, okay? So beta-2 agonism decreases uterine contractions, okay? So... Uh, we get decreased uterine contraction with beta-2 agonism, okay? Uh, although an effective bronchodilator, we, uh, we don't use it for asthma, uh, but it is the beta-2 agonism that we do see uh, with salbutamol when we uh, treat asthma, or salmeterol for a long-acting beta-2 agonism. So terbutylene and ritodrin are tocolytic agents. Now, danazole is an interesting drug that is notably a partial agonist to androgen receptors, okay? Now, androgens, such as testosterone, have uh, inhibitory effects of GnRH secretion and FSH-LH secretion, okay? Uh, they exert negative feedback at the hypothalamus and anterior pituitary. Now, unlike clomiphene, which had a partial agonistic uh, effect at the estrogen receptor and actually led to a perceived decrease in estrogen and an increase in GnRH secretion. Um, even though we have a partial agonistic effect with danazole, we still get negative feedback and uh, decreased uh, secretion of, or ovulation inducing hormones. So uh, endometriosis, um, where we get painful bleeding, okay, painful bleeding with menstruation, um, it's when we have Endometriosis is growth of endometrium outside of the uterus, okay, such as in the ovary, uh, pouch of Douglas, peritoneal cavity. But with that painful bleeding, uh, if we give an androgen receptor partial agonist and we decrease our GnRH and FSH LH, we can disrupt that, uh, that pattern of menstruation and uh, disrupt that uh, pain that we see uh, with the condition. And this is an interesting one, and believe it or not, it's actually pretty high yield. So hereditary angioedema uh, is caused by uh, a deficiency of uh, the C1 esterase inhibitor protein, okay? So um, long story short is that our uh, complement cascade can lead to effects of uh, a massive, um, almost anaphylactic type presentation where you get strider, facial, lip swelling. Um, and it's caused by a deficiency of C1 esterase inhibitor. Well, danazole has a stimulatory effect at the liver to increase the production of uh, C1 esterase inhibitor. So... Uh, we can uh, attenuate the effects of hereditary angioedema um, by giving danazole, which will have a, a stimulatory effect at the liver to increase C1 esterase inhibitor production. Okay? So the effects of danazole, uh, hirsutism is a big one, okay? and it's pretty straightforward because um, it's, a, it's an androgen. Okay, so when we get growth of hair um, where we don't want it to be growing, okay, and uh, caused by danazole, and uh, decrease HDL, okay, so uh, androgens at higher levels decrease HDL, whereas estrogens increase HDL, okay, so danazole can have that effect. Um, and pseudotumor cerebri is a very big one that's increased intracranial pressure. Okay, with uh, concurrent effects such as papilledema um, or confusion. or So uh, increased intracranial pressure uh, can cause um, pseudotumor cerebri, okay? Uh, and you see this with danazole and uh, vitamin A, uh, oral, oral contraceptive pills, 
uh, can also cause it, but it's not very high yield. Uh, it's mainly vitamin A and danazole that cause this increased intracranial pressure um, with concurrent effects such as uh, papilledema. So that's pseudotumor cerebri. Flash quiz. A woman prescribed a drug to treat her endometriosis develops papilledema. What drug did she take? That would be danazole, which causes pseudotumor cerebri. Okay, so increased intracranial pressure and effects such as papilledema. And also recall that vitamin A can cause pseudotumor cerebri. So testosterone, methyl testosterone, these are androgens. Uh, DHT is another androgen. Uh, testosterone is converted to DHT via 5-alpha reductase. Uh, we have the uh, finasteride, which inhibits 5-alpha reductase, used for benign prostatic hyperplasia, whereas luprolide goes to Raelin. Those are our GnRH receptor partial agonists, which are used for prostate cancer. Uh, androstenedione is another androgen, androstenedione. Um, now, that's a weak androgen produced by the adrenal gland, also in the testes, uh, but uh, that's aromatized estrone, weak estrogen. Estrone can then be converted to estradiol, or we can just have testosterone that is directly aromatized to estradiol. Um, but these are all agonists at androgen receptors, uh, negative feedback at the uh, hypothalamus and anterior pituitary. Uh, they can treat hypogonadism. So, uh, primary hypogonadism, you know, if you had a, a Leydig cell uh, dysfunction, okay, the uh, pathology is with the testes themselves, um, so you can give testosterone to treat that. Um, you know, or uh, you could have secondary hypogonadism. If you had decreased luteinizing hormone secretion from the anterior pituitary, you could give testosterone to treat that. Um, uh, or tertiary uh, hypogonadism, where we have like Kalman syndrome, for instance. So, uh, and androgens will promote the development of the secondary sex characteristics, such as deepening of the voice uh, and increased hair distribution. So we can have vir virilization in females, okay, hirsutism and virilization. Uh, and uh, as we've discussed, uh, the negative feedback. Okay, so um, if we give exogenous androgens, exogenous androgens, okay, if we, uh, such as bodybuilders who take steroids, uh, that'll be the negative feedback on the uh, hypothalamus anterior pituitary. So the decreased endogenous production of uh, LH uh, will lead to uh, a Leydig cell hypoplasia, so uh, a loss of uh, stimulation of the Leydig cells because we don't need testosterone produced endogenously if we're administering it exogenously. So uh, one of the negative effects of uh, exogenous testosterone. And uh, premature closure of epiphyseal plates, it's estrogen that regulates the closure of the plates. And uh, if you give exogenous testosterone, uh, that, that will be aromatized in excess to estrogen. So you get closure of the plates early, stunted growth. Uh, and androgens are uh, known to worsen, the worsen cholesterol levels uh, by increasing LDL and decreasing HDL, whereas estrogen has protective effects. So for antiandrogens, we have finasteride, which we've discussed multiple times, uh, but it's very high yield. It's used for BPH, uh, prevents the conversion of testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. Uh, now... Male pattern balding, finasteride is also known as Rogaine, so uh, it's DHT that stimulates a balding pattern in men, so uh, we can give finasteride to uh, prevent balding. And uh, flutamide actually is just a direct uh, antagonist to androgen receptors, antagonist, and we can use that for prostate cancer as well. So can you think of three drugs that we use for uh, prostate cancer? Yeah, the ones we've talked about, we said luprolide, we said gosarelin, and now we said flutamide. So, um, and flutamide directly inhibits steroid receptors, okay? And uh, spironolactone, um, now this also uh, prevents binding of androgens to its receptors, and uh, ketoconazole prevents steroid synthesis, okay? 
So uh, it's desmolase that ketoconazole will actually inhibit. Now desmolase is uh, an enzyme that's uh, active in the adrenal gland that uh, it uh, converts cholesterol to pregnenolone, and pregnenolone is a precursor to uh, aldosterone, cortisol, uh, and androstenedione, and DHEA sulfate, okay? So uh, what you need to know is just uh, ketoconazole prevents steroid synthesis in the adrenal gland, inhibits desmolase, uh, whereas ACTH, uh, adrenocorticotropic hormone, uh, actually stimulates desmolase, and that's our anterior pituitary hormone, ACTH, that increases cortisol uh, synthesis, okay? So um, ketoconazole has uh, uh, anti-androgenic effects that can help counteract the hirsutism that's seen in uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome. And uh, spironolactone um, inhibits steroid binding, okay? So, uh, you know, like flutamide, uh, we, have, we have spironolactone, okay? So uh, spironolactone is um, also a diuretic that uh, is an aldosterone receptor antagonist, okay? So uh, it's also very good for uh, systolic dysfunction and con congestive heart failure, okay? So spironolactone, a uh, good drug to know, um, but it's also known to cause gynecomastia. Tamsulosin to rhizosin. Now these are alpha-1 antagonists, and... Uh, they're really good because they are uh, most selective on the prostate, okay? So we've got alpha-1 AD receptors, um, which are prostate-specific, and whereas uh, lots of other vascular sites are alpha-1 uh, B. You don't need to know the AD versus B, but it's just uh, one of the tidbits that can help you remember this, is that um, there's prostate-specific receptors, and uh, tamsulosin is a drug that uh, acts on those receptors. They're easy to remember because they start with T. Okay, so uh, tamsulosin, terazosin, they're, uh, they're both very good for uh, BPH. Now, what you need to know is that in questions, you get your answer choices, and they'll say, how do you want to treat this BPH? We see finasteride, and we'll see uh, like tamsulosin, and you're thinking to yourself, I don't really understand because both are treatments for BPH. There's an error in the question. Uh, now, they'll give you your, their big uh, circumlocutory long-winded paragraph for uh, the USMLE question, and they'll casually throw in there that uh, the patient's blood pressure is 146 over 82, and uh, which would be um, uh, slightly hypertensive, and Alpha-1 antagonists decrease blood pressure, okay? So alpha-1 antagonists decrease blood pressure. I think prazosin we use, uh, phentolamine, phenoxybenzamine is one we use for pheochromocytoma. So uh, alpha-1 antagonists decrease blood pressure. So if they mention uh, increased blood pressure in the vignette, uh, the answer is tamsulosin. If they don't mention blood pressure, uh, the answer is finasteride if they if they do not mention blood pressure, okay? Uh, when they ask you for the treatment for uh, benign prostatic hyperplasia. Sildenafil, Vardenafil. Now, these are phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors, okay? Um, now, phosphodiesterase 5 decreases CGMP. So if you inhibit phosphodiesterase 5, you increase CGMP. Uh, an increased CGMP leads to increased nitric oxide. Um, so increased nitric oxide uh, will allow for the smooth muscle relaxation in the uh, erectile tissue of the penis and uh, will get increased blood flow and maintenance of erection, okay? So our Viagra, um, or which is our sildenafil, okay? So um, this is an important mechanism. I think the one thing I just want to highlight here is the, um, the GMP. So because the mechanism is through nitric oxide, and many students, they just kind of pass this over because they're like, yeah, yeah, I get it. I've heard sildenafil a million times. Um, and then they get to the exam, and uh, one of the answers choices says increase CAMP, 
or increase C uh, GMP and they can't remember. You have to, what you do need to remember is that the G uh, is synonymous with nitric oxide, okay? It's uh, anytime you see nitric oxide, we're increasing CGMP, okay? So not AMP with, uh, with Viagra, with sildenafil, okay? Uh, common side effect is priapism, an erection lasting longer than four hours. Okay, so, um, you know, and uh, color, uh, color blindness. So it can cause a, a blue-green uh, color blindness. Right, and that, it's an interesting effect because we have um, ethambutol, which we use for tuberculosis, that can cause visual toxicity, such as a, a red-green color blindness. But uh, sildenafil is known to cause a blue-green color blindness. Um, and once again, just the uh, priapism, which is an, an erection lasting longer than four hours. And uh, that's... Um, and... Sildenafil, Vardenafil, so these uh, phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors, uh, they cause life-threatening uh, decrease in blood pressure in patients taking nitrates, okay, because uh, nitrates will decrease preload uh, back to the right heart. Um, and if we have two drugs that are uh, leading to increased CGMP levels, uh, then uh, we'll get life-threatening hypotension, okay. So uh, you give nitrates for, uh, um, for heart problems, then uh, we'll have increased CGMP, same as with sildenafil, uh, increased CGMP.